everyone, welcome back to Cotto Verdi. My name's Annette and today we're going to be doing some planting out. Um, it is, we're in the middle of a mini heat wave and I have managed to catch a summer cold, probably from my kids who are visiting. Um, but so if I sound a bit croaky, I'm really sorry. And I'm going to be roping Richard in to help because I'm not feeling up to much, but we are going to be planting underneath this Acer Grissom here. This is a paper bark maple. And you know it says Ace Grissom. I think I'll put the name up on the screen anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to talk you through which plants we're planting today and why I've chosen them. And I will put the names and a picture up on the screen. We're also going to be planting out um, the remainder of the little pots that I had as part of my tablescape. These little pots I find don't do particularly well uh, when it gets really hot. I can't keep them watered sufficiently. And all of these plants that I put in my spring tablescape are intended to go into the garden anyway. So that's what we're also going to be doing today. So this tree really is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Um, it has got the most incredible peely red bark and when the sun shines on it which and through it so like if we're standing in the corridor the glazed corridor behind and we see the sun shining through it just really sparkles. In the spring we've got loads of daffodils planted underneath. There's one that I particularly love called Tahiti but when it comes to this time of year actually it's a little bit barren and I have in the past tried to plant a penstemon under there because penstemons do really well in my garden but I just think it's too shady. There is way too much shade created by the foliage by the time the penstemons are flowering so I kind of get just one spike from each plant um, so we're going to take the penstemons out today and put them in another spot where they're going to be a lot happier and we're going to plant up the base of this tree. We are going to add some compost to it because the root ball on this tree is really quite large um, so I need to make sure that we can plant these plants deeply enough, sufficiently deeply to get them rooted in. So we're going to add a layer of multi-purpose peat-free compost, we're also going to add some plant food and then once we've planted the plants and watered them in obviously um, we're going to cover it with a layer of mulch and that is just going to help retain the moisture and hopefully suppress weeds whilst the plants bed in. So there are going to be three different plants going in in this metre square bed underneath the Acer. Uh, the first one is an Alcamilla mollis. Now if you've watched my previous videos you'll know that I planted Alcamilla mollis underneath a flowering cherry tree the other week. These Alcamilla mollis actually came as plug plants and I've been growing them on so these aren't Alcamilla mollis from my nursery uh, which is why they look a little bit healthier than the ones I planted previously. Alcamilla mollis is also known as ladies mantle and I think it is absolutely incredible because it's got these gorgeous scalloped bright green leaves and it's very popular because uh, when these leaves catch the water they kind of form these really big droplets and look just stunning they look very special so also between june and september ladies mantle is going to have these gorgeous frothy flowers in a sort of chartreusey limey lemony color and they look wonderful in the garden they just really add a touch of whimsy but also just a perfect pop of bright colour when we really need it. They're also great for cutting and using in flower arrangements and I find that Alcamella mollis grows really really easily everywhere in my garden so I find it self-seeding in beds that we don't maintain at all because we haven't done anything with these beds yet, we haven't dug them, they're not planted up and it's just growing wild there I've also discovered this year that it's growing in a crack between two pallets and it's, it's formed a really large plant in this spot. It doesn't get watered, it doesn't get fed, nothing is maintained around it and it's just self-seeded here and is growing really happily. So I know that I'm going to have really healthy plants underneath this tree because as I said it grows everywhere and it will grow in shade. So this tree actually does create shade for most of the day. Um, until sort of late afternoon, evening, um, and that's when the bed will get quite a lot of very hot sun. Ladies' mantle is going to grow to 50 centimetres tall, that's with the flowers, and between 50 and 80 centimetres wide. I am actually cramming the plants in, so on each side of this square, I'm planting 
three. So I'm planting one in each corner and then one in the middle. Once it's established, it's gonna be super drought tolerant and it's gonna be really easy to maintain because we can just cut it back when it's finished, finished blooming and then it will rebloom and the leaves will flush out again and just look smart all season long. The other plant that I've got is a Tiarella. I've only got three, so I'm choosing three corners where I think it's gonna be best suited. This Tiarella is called Sugar and Spice. It's a foam flower, if that's what you know it by, um, and it will grow to 40 centimeters tall and about 30 wide, so it's not going to spread very much. But the best thing about this foam flower is that it's got these gorgeous, shiny, mid-green, hokura-like leaves, and each one has got this margin of crimson in it, so it's, very eye-catching, and I think it'll be a lovely contrast with the lady's mantle. It's gonna form a really dense carpet of foliage in the summer, and between May and July, it's got these gorgeous spikes of tiny star-shaped flowers. Unfortunately, they're over. They're kind of a blushy white color, um, but uh, it's flowered already. It was flowering when I received it in the post. Um, so unfortunately I don't have any flowers anymore, but that's fine because the foliage, once it picks up, is gonna look wonderful. Now the reason my plants are looking a little bit ropey is because they were in very small pots and I haven't managed to keep them watered sufficiently well, but it's going to recover. The plants are healthy, the root systems are healthy and fine, and it will definitely recover. It may not look brilliant this year, um, or it may, uh, but it will definitely uh, you know, bounce back next year and we'll have a wonderful display. So the other thing about the Tiarella, which are relatives of hookahs, is that um, they do really well in shady parts of the garden, especially moist shady parts. I mean, obviously not soaking wet. Um, so I'm planting them slightly further in than the ladies' mantle. Um, they're just going to be in a sort of an inner ring. Um, and I'm hoping that over time, I'm going to be able to divide them and sort of fill in the blank spots a little bit. Now the thing I'm going to use to fill in the empty spots this year is some more of the Begonia Semperflorens, which um, if you've been following along, I've used in my patio pots because they cope really well with a little bit of neglect and they don't mind shade. So I am dotting all the Begonia Semperflorens that I have left, which are all white, the white variety, that's what I prefer. Um, it's just a personal preference. Um, I am dotting all of those around in the rest of this bed and I'm hoping that they will fill out in time. Um, certainly my patio containers, they're looking absolutely wonderful. Um, I have found over the years that this is a really good doer for me. So I always make sure that I get hold of some of this begonia. Every single season I get hold of quite a lot because it really does fill gaps for me, especially if it's in shade. Um, if you don't know what Begonia Semperflorens is, it's um, this sort of it's almost succulent-like plant. It's got like really fleshy, rounded leaves, and it has these lovely little sprays of flowers all summer long. They can be white or pink or red. Um, you can get definitely mixed batches, but as I said, I always choose the white ones. So we can see here that I've got Alcamilla mollis um, dotted around. I've kind of done one in each corner and then one in the middle. And then I've dotted around the begonia. We can see the begonias because they're white. And then on this corner here, slightly further in than the ladies' mantle, I've got the Tiarella. And then there's one in that corner and one in this corner. And as I said, they do look a little bit ropey, but they will bounce back. I have no worries about that at all. Now 
just behind this bed here, um, in this spot is where you've just seen Richard planting some primula. Now this primula that I'm popping into this space here is exactly the same primula that I've got in this terracotta pot container up there. This primula is called Ballerina Pink Ice and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I'll pop a picture up on the screen of what it looked like uh, when it was in flower, and I thought it was gorgeous. And unfortunately, I've only got two to go in this spot here, but I think it'll be absolutely fine. I just kind of um, wanted to find a space that was close by to the container that I have up there. So I've chosen this spot here to plant the other primulas. These primulas are called Queen Mandarin, and again, they're gorgeous double blooms in a lovely, soft, romantic, yellowy pinky mandarin color I suppose um, they're just they sort of look like little peonies um, they're ever so cute in fact they're very similar in shape to the ballerina pink ice um, that we pot it popped into the other bed but I've chosen to put them here because they're sort of the same color scheme as this geum that we've got growing here I can't actually remember the name of the geum so I'm going to pop it up on the screen um, because I think it's really important I'll put a picture of the geum up as well so you you can see um, why I've chosen this spot and the GMs will hopefully be flowering at the same time as these gorgeous Queen Mandarin primroses. So here in front of a gorgeous rose that I've really grown to love this year, it's called Julia Rose or Julia's Rose. Um, it's such a pretty color, it's almost like Coco Loco. So it's got these sort of very dusky colors. Um, the one bloom I've got on here at the moment is going over slightly, um, but right in front of it is a super sunny spot that gets sun sort of from midday right through to late evening. And this is where I'm planting out some ground cover plants. So one of these has come from my spring tablescape and the other two actually were for the trough planter that I planted up the other day. Um, but we didn't have room for them so I've chosen to put them here because I think they all go really nicely together they'll tie in beautifully and they'll just be really happy in this spot and in the future we're going to be doing something at the front of this border here that will make this make more sense what I'm planting here will make a lot more sense so the three things I'm popping into this spot um, the first one is an arboreta called Audrey Red and this was part of the spring tablescape and it's got this lovely silvery foliage with really rich red flowers that flower very early in spring it's a very early flowering variety and I had I had flowers yes yeah, super early um, so it's supposed to flower from March to May it's very hardy down to about minus 15 degrees centigrade and some websites actually say that this is slow spreading and some say that it's quite vigorous so we'll see how quickly this one spreads here I'm not sure but um, it grows to 15 centimeters tall but up to 60 centimeters wide so with any luck I'm going to be able to divide this over time and create like a really nice patch it is fantastic ground cover the other thing I'm popping in here and I have got one actually that's flowering beautifully in the trough already is an erodium bishop's form uh, this is a stalk's bill grows to 10 centimeters tall and 50 centimeters wide it's got these gorgeous small geranium like flowers between June and September. Uh, this one's sort of like a purpley mauve colour. The foliage forms this really nice mound of gently scalloped leaves. It's important to avoid wet soil with erodium so if you are planting it somewhere that might get wet then put um, some grit in your planting spot but it is great for gravel gardens and alpine beds and even pots. The other thing that we're planting here um, 
used to be called a helichrysum. It's now called an ozothamnus and this variety is County Park Silver and it's got this really unusual and eye-catching silvery leaves and they, um, they're very low growing so it forms this really flat mat of evergreen foliage. It loves full sun, completely drought tolerant once it's established. Um, it does have tiny white flowers but it really doesn't flower often apparently. I've not seen any flowers on it yet. This is one of the spots where we planted the Penstem and Heavenly Blue. You can see that I've just kind of dotted them around in a clump. They look really spindly and weak. They really weren't happy in the shade of that Acer. I think they're going to look absolutely spectacular here because they do have like a little pink tinge. And these are my Coco Loco roses. So I think that this is a really good spot. And I've got a really big bunch of Verbena bonariensis um, dangling over them. So because I had quite a lot of these penstemons underneath the Acer I've been able to also add some penstemons in this general area here. So this is obviously the same one, Heavenly Blue. You can see this gorgeous rose here, Susan Daniel. So underneath Susan Daniel I've got some geraniums that I planted the other day called Anne Thompson and also some salvia called Salvito Violet. So this is sort of going to be a lovely haze of blue and purple underneath these two roses. Well I really hope you've had fun with us today as we planted some of the plants out and tried to save others that were in tiny pots from the heat wave. Um, I think they were all going to do really well where they're planted and it was always my intention to plant everything out from the spring tablescape and put it in the garden. Anyway if you've enjoyed the video today please do give it a like it really does help me and if you'd like to see more videos like this then subscribe to my channel I'd love to have you along. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.